ora, good evening. One news is tonight coming from our emergency studio after the big fire that continues to burn forced the evacuation of TVNZ headquarters. Simon is just outside the Sky City Convention Centre site. He joins us now. Simon. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, from this angle, it may seem that the smoke has just disappeared from that colourful building behind me, the International Convention Centre. That's where the fire's been burning for nearly 30 hours now. And while there might not be a lot of smoke now, there has been over the last few hours. We've even seen flames licking over the roof line of the centre. Here you can see uh, smoke rising from the left-hand side in particular. Firefighters a short time ago say they're starting to win the battle, but confirming at the same time that one of their own has been injured by falling debris. We have extensive coverage this evening. The One News team is right across developments, and we we begin with Kim Baker Wilson. Kim. Well, destructive and devastating. Those are the words Sky City and Fletchers are using to describe this fire in this mass. And One News is also feeling the effects firsthand, the toxic fumes forcing TVNZ to move out for at least the next 48 hours. All our news programs are now being broadcast from an off-site studio with more than 100 staff from breakfast at 6 p.m. and 7 sharp working in a makeshift newsroom at Spark headquarters. So far, so good. And you probably noticed a paired back different-looking news program. A news alert, though, because of the evacuation, we're unable to bring you our late news bulletin tonight, later this evening. No other TVNZ programming is affected. Two other news now, and politicians have a big decision ahead of them tonight as they debate whether to hold a referendum on legalising euthanasia at next year's election. The vote from MPs expected to be close. Political reporter Mikey Sherman's across developments and joins us now. Mikey. MPs have spent the last two hours debating arguably one of the City Convention Centre fire. Simon. Yeah, they've already had a hell of a day, Wendy, but firefighters will keep working through the night to try and put that blaze out after already battling it for more than 30 hours now. We'll have more live updates right throughout the news hour. Stick around. On 7 Sharp, just how bad is the air quality in central Auckland? We've had a scientist taking samples and the results are in. Plus, who's helping the helpers? We meet the generous Kiwis feeding the firefighters. See you at 7. Fire up your taste buds tonight. Next, the very latest from the convention centre fire that's causing chaos in our biggest city, Kim. Well, there are still flames and there's still smoke, but for how much longer? Firefighters hope to get a hold of it soon. More for you shortly. On 7 Sharp, just how bad is the air in central Auckland? The scientific testing is in. We'll reveal the results shortly. Plus, I asked the Prime Minister about the impact this fire will have on our economy. We'll see you soon. Welcome back. The Sky City Convention Centre fire behind me has now been burning for more than 30 hours. Despite the absence of flame and smoke that you can see from here, we do see it period periodically popping up over the top of that, that roof line and it is clearly still ablaze. The high winds in Auckland have made it tough for firefighters battling the blaze, but authorities say they're starting to win the fight. Our reporters are standing by with the latest updates. Let's go first to Kim Baker-Wilson. Kim. Yeah, they do say they are certainly... McKenzie, One News. All right, Andrew joins us now with Sport, live from Tokyo. Andrew. Hello, Wendy. Yes, evening from the streets of Shinjuku. We're outside the Rugby World Cup mega store where the merchandise continuing to fly off the shelves, especially Japan, yes, still, and the All Blacks. Now, there is another semi final on this weekend at the Cup. We'll hear from the South Africans in just a moment. Also, catch up with their former inspirational skipper. We'll also have more from the England camp. Has there been any more apparent spying? Plus, the go to guys show why they paid the big bucks in Champions League football. Welcome back to Central Tokyo on the countdown to the Rugby World Cup semi-finals this weekend. Well, this time tomorrow... Well, that's it for sport tonight. Live from uh, Tokyo, back with you tomorrow. Don't forget the All Blacks team at around 3.30 tomorrow, your time for the Rugby World Cup semi-final. Look forward to that. Thank you, Andrew. Well, just ahead, Dan has your weather and the wintry blast is easing, but another spell of wind and rain is on the way. Then, Katie, you've got an update on the Sky City Convention Centre fire for us. Yes, what this huge blaze and all the smoke means for people who live and work in the city and for some major events, I'll have details just before 7pm.
At seven, we get a read on the air quality around central Auckland in the wake of the fire. Plus, we're going to talk about the economic impacts of this event and the school children who are being taught the life skills to take whatever life throws at them. We'll see you soon. Hello, it certainly has been a wild day of weather. You would have thought the winter had more or less taken center stage. We've had some snow down south, wind gusts, some heavy rain, and some pretty significant wind gusts as well. Cook straight, 130 kilometers per hour around the Hauraki Gulf, the same. And even when the squall line went through central Auckland, just about middle part of the day, 115 kilometers per hour measured atop the sky tower as it blasted its way through. Of course, there is finally some quieter weather to come in. Let's take a look at the uh, satellite. You can see what I mean. It'll be for, of course, Monday. That might bring some wetter weather to the west of the North Island. That's how it's looking. So the weather is going to slowly quieten down. I think finally, Simon, that's how it's looking. So back to you now. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Thank you very much for that, Dan. Much appreciated. Well, before we hand you over to Seven Sharp, let's get the latest update on the Convention Centre fire behind us. It's been going for 30 hours now. Despite the absence of uh, obvious flame and smoke at the moment, we can assure you that has been seen regularly over the past few hours. Let's bring our reporters back in now, starting once again with Kim Baker-Wilson. Kim. Well, we've certainly been able to... Inside this cordon can't come in at all. Uh, so you, you will expect to see disruption over the next couple of days. Uh, hopefully by the weekend, things will start to clear up again. Yes, indeed. Fingers crossed for that, indeed. And, of course, the One News team will stay right across the story as it develops, as it continues, and as firefighters continue to gain the upper hand, as you can see, the water cannons continue to fly onto the roof line of the International Convention Centre. Time now to hand you over to Seven Sharp. Hillary.